Hi, this is Lars Islander for the End of the Worlds We Know It blog. Uh, I'm here in the Poly Tunnel with Heimdall, and uh, we're going to be looking at putting up some shelves to uh, basically have a, a workbench and uh, cockerels. Uh, to basically have a workbench and uh, some sort of area for growing, like sort of potted plants and the hydroponic stuff. So, yeah, we'll just be making little videos over the course of the afternoon and edit them all together at the end. <laughs> There we go, we're recording. Uh, these are some shelf... Uh, they came from an old workshop. Um, fuck's sake. We're gonna probably put some support, like diagonal supports across the back to sort of brace them, because they're quite wobbly. Uh, this is one we've actually put in. As you can see, it almost touches the top, so we're probably gonna cut it across there. Uh, and then the plan is to have these sort of running from where the hose is down to have like a workbench across this area here. So Heimdall is putting the polythene on the other two doors. Uh, so, just, uh, yeah, if you want to explain what you're doing. Basically, put this. Over the top, getting some batten, very similar to this stuff, but I haven't unpacked yet. And then you put it tight down on one side, you nail it this way across. And you do the other ends as well with another bit. And then do the top beams across here and here, and then you put it really tight and then pass the other bits in and then cut it off. Okay. Door done. Brilliant. And you've got two of those to do? Yes. Great. Hopefully. Okay. <coughs> and that'll keep him out. Don't feel self-conscious. <laughs> We're just all judging you silently. So these are for the cross braces. That question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They are, and they're exactly 23 and a half inches. Okay, so, so you should get three of those out of one length. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. So this is how the polyphene's going on. Saw. Saw is over there. I've just uh, cut the tops off of these two uprights for the shelves so that they fit in underneath. And uh, I'm going to go and get the, the actual shelf planks now so we can work out where it's going to go. Uh, this centre one, which is, uh, has two sort of shelf ha holders on each side, is going to go in the middle underneath this hoop. And then the other two are going to go each side of it, probably not quite as far as the other hoops with the shelves on top. These are the two shelves. Uh, they're made out of uh, one inch chipboard. I've just pulled them out from uh, the stables over there with the uh, trolley. A bit out of breath, they're quite heavy. i uh, just going to see what Heimdall's doing. Ah, I see you've uh, Started hammering stuff. Yeah, it's going alright. Hardest part is obviously trying to get it as tall as you can. Yeah. Which doesn't always work. I found when I did the other one, if you put, if you stretch the plastic through, put a nail in, and then stretch it, keep stretching it along from that corner. Mm. So stretching it this way, putting a nail in the corner, and then stretching it that way. People can't see that this way, up from sort of this bottom corner along, is uh, a good way of doing it. Uh, on one of them, I think I put, uh, I nailed the corner of this and then put the batten along the bottom. It might be easier doing the bat, stretching it along with the batten on the bottom, and stretching it up, up in this direction. Yeah, that okay.
yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you pull the plastic key along that way. Yeah. And really just put stretch it. If I put my foot here, if you just stretch the plastic through and put another another nail on that end. Do you want me to lean on that? Okay. Yeah. I also found it easy if you put, tap the nail into the batten so that it stays there, but not through into the plastic, and then pull the plastic, I hold the batten straight, pull the plastic with one hand and hammer it with the other. Yeah. Cool. Alright, just do, uh, as, you, as you've done, the nails and the battens go over what, 8 inches? Roughly. About that, yeah. So you put those in across the bottom first. It is hot as hell in here. <laughs> a butterfly snake back. Oh yeah, we got our first wildlife. Unfortunately, they look like cabbage whites. Uh, that ain't focusing. Yeah, I'm not sure whether these are happy butterflies or bad butterflies. I know cat at some. Some caterpillars in this part of the world eat cabbages and all sorts of plants. As you can see, the uh, the corn there has gone completely mad. And uh, the other day after work I started emptying out this bed here, but didn't really do much with it. Uh, we just found out there's a massive great ant's nest here. So uh, Heimdall's a little bit itchy. So we're going to move the action to here. So this is like the rough position inside the hoops where the shelves are going to go. I need to straighten them up a bit. You shut up. Uh, so I'm going to get the level on those. I'm going to get it, twist them so that the shelves are straight rather than the, the uprights are straight, I think. Or try and get it as close as possible. Unfortunately the floor's not particularly even down there. So it's going to look a bit rustic, whatever I do. In this gap down here uh, is going to be a bit of room for uh, some raised beds or some hydroponic beds and uh, I'll need to work it so that these I'll need to work it so that these nutrient film beds as an example come out to here that there's going to be enough room to walk through up and down this way and to move around them. So actually maybe these shelves could move over about another foot towards the hoop. <laughs> yep, right, this so is your turn. <laughs> my turn. Right, so um, I'm down here. Um, we've just finished one door, or I have. Mm -hmm. um, we obviously, slight change to the plan originally was just to line them all down, put the sides on first, but we do one side, put one corner in first, stretch it all over, and then put in the top one here, and that you can put it down. And then we put down the side one here, so then that keeps it in the corner tight. And then we start just working down and pulling them tight, and then just hammering the nails in. And obviously, it's a lot of excess sheet, mm. so you just with a knife gently, so you don't damage the wood underneath or anything that will make any gaps here. You just slice away the plastic. And Pretty easy. Okay, where's the, the plastic that you've... Plastic that I've cut so this is a plastic end. stockpile here. So this is from one side. <laughs> okay. So you can see... Kind of a fair shapes. amount of it, yeah. And... Put over there for a second. This is another door bit. If I get it up right, you can see that there's a kind of a right cool. angle here. And these are the... just the links. That's cut in bits. Okay. That's pretty much it, really. And cool. There's another one we've done earlier on the other door. Mm hmm. Cool. And so we should have two sheets left for the final door, which is there. And then these go on. Exactly the same as that. And then we'll have another working cool. finished door. And then we've got to put them up. Okay. Another story. This will be another story. Okay. Another story.
on the topic of a story from another time. <laughs> okay, yes. We were just saying that uh, it reminded me of Baldur's Gate 2 Dark Alliance on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, I think. And uh, right to the end, you defeat the Onyx God, or well, the Onyx Guy, I remember getting an Onyx Sword. And mm -hmm. then there's this uh, other character that you've seen, this NPC. And uh, he's talking to our sarcophagus, and then it starts talking to it, and then it goes, and that is a story for another time. And they never release Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. That and you off. threw your PlayStation out the window. Not my PlayStation, someone okay. else's. Alright, and that, that's, that's the moral of the story. That is the moral if, if, of the story. You, if you're going to rage quit and throw your PlayStation out the window, make sure it's somebody else's PlayStation. Yes. Okay. Definitely. I'm a little worried, you know, you're swinging that around, or if you're going to like, stab me, you're coming like, threateningly towards me with that thing. Hey, no throwing knives in the polytunnel. <laughs> so we finally solved the problem with the manifold. Uh, this is all blurry as hell, but you can see for some reason... Okay, it's autofocus, there we go. You can see here the little arrow with the drip, right? Uh, this has been a problem for a while, and usually, because we've got quite hard water on the island, it will uh, calcify up. Uh, so anyway, we've now fixed it. It's no longer a problem. There we go. Sorted. Here is the second shelf support. I've uh, just lashed it on at the top to the cross beams at each end. They're both roughly level on upright and horizontal. Uh, and they're both roughly in line with each other. So probably what I'm going to do is we've got a long 2x4 like that. Let me see if I can find maybe a slightly shorter one. Uh, these are seven feet apart, I think. Uh, so I need to double check that. And then probably one about five or six feet on the end, this end, to put the third support in so that it comes in, in line with this row of pots here. And so then this little cubby hole here on this side will be... There we go. Let's uh, see what Heimdall says. Seven feet, right? And one inch. And one inch. Nice. So, yeah. So maybe maybe five feet or so on this side will be a little space as a workbench in there. Somewhere for the computer. And then this will probably be some sort of hydroponic rig. I'm not sure about the top. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Here is the beam that's going to run the length and uh, just provide some support underneath the shelves. What I've done is I've used uh, a bit of 2x2 two two just to block out where I'm going to cut and uh, then I'm going to screw through the tops of these down into these to uh, secure this on. There's two notch sections there that are going to sit onto these and hopefully keep everything quite rigid. So Freya showed up to help out with the rest of the door. I'm just sawing out the notches. I've got one to cut out. Put these two halfway through. I'm going to have to chisel there. Get a chisel and block that out. And the far end. One thing slightly worrying is that this end is, was there. Uh, if you can see, but this end is all a little bit damp where it's been sitting in the grass. These are actually leaning up against the side of uh, one of the buildings. But hopefully it will dry out and it's not starting to rot. But we'll find out. Don't seem to be um. Hmm? Don't seem to be focusing very well. Yeah, the focusing on is a bit weird. Oh, there you go.
Okay, so these we just uh, fitted it on upside down just as a, a test. Uh, be quiet. Dogs barking now as well. Brilliant. We've got chickens and dogs. Uh, this one here, I need to take the rasp and file down this one a little bit. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it should all fit. This is uh, Lars. Uh, we've taken a break for a, I don't know, a couple of hours, and now we're back at it. Uh, I've actually done a bit of work and I forgot to film it, so I'll just do a quick tour now. And that's uh, Heimdall bashing on uh, stuff at the other end. Okay, so this is the first bench. Uh, if I just come around, get a bit of a better angle on it. So, right, this is the, the end one. I see I've cut them at odd heights so they'd never touch the roof of the polytunnel. The far one was a little bit close to the polythene for comfort. Uh, and what I've got is I've just got bits of spare batten there, and they're just holding it sort of, sort of square. It's not particularly square. Uh, right, I've got the cross beam there, which is quite a chunky bit of wood. Uh, what I've done, as you can see, is I've nailed these in place, sort of like that. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any screws. Uh, and then each each section here has a couple of nails in it. Uh, I've nailed down the board before I did a video, actually. Um, but you can see it sort of extends over the end there a bit. I probably won't cut this one off. I'm going to have to cut the other one short. And then underneath, you can sort of see... And then underneath you can sort of see that the uh, that goes across, and I've nailed that down in the corners, and then every sort of 24 inches, sort of going along. Uh, I might add some more in later on, depends. Uh, this is actually pretty pretty sturdy now. I can sit on it, as you can see, uh, and it's not collapsed and killed me. So. I guess, uh, I don't know how well you can see me like that, I guess if I ever, you know, need to camp out here I could probably sleep on this, but that would be a bit stupid. Okay, uh, right, so let's go and see what Heimdall's doing. So, what's happening down here, Heimdall? Just attaching the sliding door assembly okay runners runners these are what aluminium extrusion they look like a fun good. You got a funky uh, sort of shape to them you move your hand yeah and so what the door runners how do they run are they running this brave they're running this bit here okay um, you have to wait for a later video okay. for that one and how what is that bit you've got well I'm trying to read it and understand it actually. okay sorry this is our instruction manual. It's been a bit chickened because we left it out in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, uh, okay, so this is sort of what we've got to do. And this, the bit of wood there is like the cross beam for the door. Yes. Okay. Which is this bit you just attached. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go outside. Okay, so this new bit of batten across there is for the door runners to attach to. And there's two of them, they're going to stick out, what, either side? Yep. Cool, okay. Uh, right. There's uh, all the junk we've created while making this. And uh, this or massive orange cable here is where our power's going to come from. At the moment, it's all down here. It'll, fall, it'll all run along the roof, I think, to the far end where the workbench is. And you can see it just, uh, it's like sort of the outdoor plugs. Uh, a little aside, these are the walnut trees. Um, they've come out of the freezer about two weeks ago and they're now in the warm and nothing has happened to them. I spent a couple of seconds trying to figure out what this little bit with the grub screws does. Uh, basically, you pull it in here, sort of halfway. Okay. You tighten this bit up. With you. Like so. Okay. And obviously. And then here for a second. Okay. I don't lift it up in here. No, obviously we're okay. going through the roof. Yeah. I'm so paranoid, man. And this bit connects into there. So same again on the other side, and it connects and the two rails I together. Just show you. Okay. Because this won't work. Right. Okay. So slots together like so. Like 
like so. There's maybe a bit of an art to lining these two bits of extrusion up. Yep. Fine. Guide you in from this side. There you go. And Almost. That's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's good enough for illustration, isn't it? Yeah. And then Sorry. it all Stop. comes apart, and that's how we attach it to the door. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this bit in. This is the second shelf. It's going across there. I think it should be okay for headroom. Probably just going to use this for putting little trays of plants on or something. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I probably need to put another beam across actually to strengthen it up, and then that way we can have some sort of hefty planters up there. Because that's you can see that that, that is not happy right now. Uh, I'm wondering about having like a, some hydroponics trays up here and then on this one as well and then having them drain down into a, a sump on the bottom so maybe like this this half of it the field of view on this camera is a bit narrow so the, the last half of that I think wait, focus, come on uh, yeah, so having the last half of this as a hydroponics bed or area maybe the other thing I was going to do at some point is have uh, some like sort of a, a grow wall. Um, I'll see if I can post some other videos up in the uh, in the blog explaining this. But having the back wall of this as uh, lots of little, little grow pots, and then having plants growing all down here, and then we can basically just walk along here and harvest the plants and make good use of this little area here, which is going to get a lot of light in the uh, during the day, but uh, otherwise we probably couldn't use it. Just a, a quick thought as we're putting in where we're going to drill the bolt holes for this. Uh, if you can see, we were originally going to put them on the end here. And crush that out. Because on the opposite sides of these, we've got loads of nails and a mess of uh, nail plate. So that's not going to work. So what we're going to do is have to go in about six inches on either side. It will make the mounting holes a little bit closer together, but to be honest, it's not going to have a huge amount of weight on it. It sticks out anyway. And yeah, and we've got like plenty of room for the bolts to go through. So yeah, Heimdall's going to go and drill these now, and uh, we'll be back for that. Don't watch me. Oh, why not? We're documenting this documenting for. Uh, this. Oh, I don't know, it's going to be uh, an interesting So mess. we're a little concerned that this drill might be uh, a little bit too fast. Uh, and it's like an ancient drill that uh, knows no. There's nothing to temper the speed on this thing. Now we need the chuck. <laughs> ah, okay. In that case, uh, pass, because that might have been lost to the sands of time. Okay, and we're back with real drill. I'm not sure it's tight enough. Yeah, this one has a chuckless uh, bit on it. Right, let's take two. Much better. Yes, much better. You doing? Not quite tight enough. Well, it's actually not. It's jamming. Yeah. Huh. You might need to do two holes. Uh -uh. Right, just I'll take it again. Just... Take three. Yeah, we're going to drill a smaller pilot hole first. Look at that nice wrist action there. <laughs> Literally hours of practice. No. So it's not long 
enough. It doesn't need to be like yeah, I know. that long. Alright, here we go. Okay, I, I suggest we drill all of the small holes first. But right, do this. Test this first. Just test sure. it, okay. And then, yes, I will drill every single small hole. Cool. Like the sisters. <laughs> you deserve that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Supposed to be that high up. That's the point you pull it at. All right, fine. No, that's fine. It's how you measured it. Okay, we'll go with that. Right, so hole number one. We'll. Uh, I don't actually have a, enough uh, memory left of my camera for a montage sequence. But uh, <laughs> what I'll do is we'll just uh, come back with a status update. There we go. So it took a bit of wiggling and uh, two people did them. To get that in, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we're lowering the tone doing these like two people videos, aren't we? Uh, okay, so we now got washers to stop uh, the nuts chewing up the wood, and we've got nuts going on there. Yeah, I've got. Them. Yeah. Okay, that, that wasn't very funny. And somewhere I've got uh, a spare. We've got a spare, okay, cool. But don't lose spare. it because the other one probably only has three of them in there. This is like his, the world's biggest IKEA kit, really. <laughs> so all the fixings have been crap, half of them have been missing. We've had loads of extra bits that we don't need. Uh, <laughs> and the bits that we do need, we don't have extra of. Yeah. Okay, you're right, nah. so this isn't all the way in yet. Well, we could probably, just by tightening them up, do that. Oh, yeah, um, I think they're down. Yeah, we've got, the big, we've got the big wrench here. There we go. No. no? Really? It worked. Right then. Should I do it? This is, this is, I just think it's right. for, uh, overkill. That's all. Oh, whatever. This looks like it's like a first person shot, but uh, I've got incredibly long arms and broken elbows. I'll just step back a little bit. There we go. Would be much easier without this. Okay, well, if you want to go and get the. Well, maybe. Was it like a the 13 mil, right? Okay. Okay. Hold that for. What? Oh yeah, if you take one of them with you, you can check. Cool. The little socket set should be um, in the studio. Okay. While well, Heimdall's off uh, searching for stuff, I'm going to show you. Tomatoes. We've got quite a few of these little baby ones appearing. Uh, these ones are quite old, but they've been like, pecked at by the chickens, which hopefully should be excluded from the greenhouse. Oh, they're quite big ones. These two plants here, the, uh, the heritage ones, have gone completely nuts. I need to tie those up actually, that's all on the floor there. Uh, you can see we've got the corn is now flowering, which is cool. Put little bugs on it, I'm not sure if it'll ever focus. Focus. Okay. Yep, so there's the corn. Is that an ear coming out there? Oh, there we go, we've got an ear of corn coming out I think. That's cool. Okay, back to the door. Realising that I might need a spanner. So we've got the socket set. Cool. Okay. Oh. Close enough, I guess. No. Right. No. Okay. Focus. Uh, the auto focus on this is just driving me mad. Uh. There we go. So that's, that's pulled everything in. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Same way. 
clunk. That was an ominous clunk noise, wasn't it? I think it was this. Yeah, probably. Okay. Nice. Yep. Okay, so if we look from the outside. There we go. Yeah, on there video, yeah. I can hang. Yeah, but on, on the on the Polytunnel guys video, she's like a seventy pound woman. I don't think you're gonna no, not. hang off that. Okay. So you might notice it's slightly off-centre, uh, that's because the door's slightly off-centre uh, and by design, not because we built it wrong. <laughs> okay, let's get the doors on. Okay, Here we yeah. have some toddler-proof caps to make sure that all the toddlers don't take their eyes out on this. Yeah. Because they're always up on ladders. Yeah. Bloody toddlers, you never know what they'll do next. Parents. Right, here we go. Right, there's the door, little, I like to pretend they're little cars, had hours of entertainment from those. And that's why nothing got done. And that, that's why it's taken so long for the doors to go on, because I've been playing with little casters. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And just by design, they're just the right length so that like, we can put a little doorstep underneath. <laughs> okay. This is brilliant. The camera is focusing on like the handle of the little wagon here rather than on everything else. There we go, focused. Just in the toy cars. Oh, okay. Donated by RC Matchbox. He's playing with them. Right. There it is. There it is, people. There's doors. Ta da! They're slightly different lengths, but they're no, doors, no, doors nonetheless. The cars need adjusting. Okay. So that it screws. And then cool. they need. Okay. That. They're obviously on a slight incline. Heimdall did it. What do you mean it's wonky? Oh. From here it looks like it's slanting downwards. I think that's because everything's slanting downwards and also the fence is slanting downwards the opposite direction. Find out. Okay, I mean they do slide. Yeah, there's but there'll be a stopper there. Yeah. And there'll be like a little latch holding it closed. Oh right, okay. It's all good. Alright. Thank you.